What a privilege to be here again in the house of the Lord and just to get to know Him better. Because that's all about it. It's not here to get to know ourselves better, but to get Him to know Him better. Okay. And we've been speaking about identity for the last couple of weeks. So today will be part three, uh, living out the new man. Okay. Because now we said last week that uh, we need to follow Christ. Christ died for us. Okay. And we said, so we get a new life. So you can't get, you can't get a new life if you don't let your old one down. Okay. You have to put it down. Right? Put down the old man, put on the new man. Okay. And then God wants us to live out of our new man. That's why the reason he gave it to us. So we can live out of the new man. Okay. The old man is corrupt. Really, with a song we sang, it says, um, He came to replace my broken spirit. Okay. That's what we were. We were broken. We were broken down before Him, or broken down because of sin. We lost our relationship with God because of sin. Sin separated us. Okay. So God said, If you eat from the tree, you will surely die. And when Adam and Eve ate from a tree, they did not die physically. They died spiritually. They got a broken spirit. Okay. The spirit died. And from that point onwards, they had a carnal mind. They did not... So before that, let's backtrack a bit. What Adam did, he did whatever God told him, that's what he did. Okay. He did not question God. They don't need to question God. Because whatever God told him was for his good. Okay. Now, it says that when he ate of the fruit, he got the knowledge of good and evil. So now when God said something, when now something happens, Adam does two things. What is a pros? What's a con? What's a good? What's the evil? Okay. So now it becomes survival. Whatever we get from God, now we, or whatever we face in life will be when we, what we got was our survival instinct. Okay. So everything I do is now to protect me. And the first thing when God said to Adam, why did you eat the fruit? Ah, she gave it to me. Okay. Pointing to Eve. He was trying to protect himself. So now his first thing he's thinking of is myself. So at the fall, man got himself. Before that, it says, so it says God spoke to him in a garden. Okay, that was God's voice. Then the enemy came and he spoke to Eve. And that was the second voice. Okay. Eve listened to the enemy. And then God comes and he finds Adam and says, Adam, Adam, where are you? And Adam says, I've sinned against you. And then God asks him, who told you that? So who told him that? Was it the enemy? No. Was it God? No. So at the fall, there was a third voice born there. Okay. A voice of self-protection. Now I'm failing or now I've sinned against God. Now I'm trying to protect myself. Okay. So that's part of our fallen state. So when we come to Christ, we need to die to the old man. It means we also need to lay down that survival instinct. Okay, when it comes to spiritual stuff. We need to trust God. Whatever God tells us to do, that's what we need to do. We need to get back to the point that whatever, when God says something to us, it's going to be for my benefit. I don't have to... I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about the pros and the cons. I just need to do it. Okay. And sometimes God will tell us to do things which is not nice or not easy. These guys are taking, you say, doing an 11 kilometer walk. That's not easy. Okay. But they decided to do it and they did it. Okay. And were you blessed? Yes, they were blessed. And sometimes God will tell you to go and do something that you might in yourself do not want to do. 
But we need to then say, hey, it's not about me. I haven't got a choice in this. My old man is dead. Okay. I'm dead in Christ. The life I now live, I live through Christ. Okay. So now we need to live in Him, through Him, by Him, in Him. So this new life that we get to live, it is for His glory. It's not for our glory anymore, it's for His glory. But now we get to be partakers in that glory. We get to be heirs of Him. He says we are co-laborers with Christ. God could have done anything Himself. Did not need us. Does not need us. Okay. But He chose to use us. He chose for us to be partakers. So we can go out and we can do things for Him. With Him. Okay. So every time we step out, we're stepping out in faith that He is going to be there with us. Yes. Okay. So we need to step out of our comfort zone. Yes. Because in my comfort zone, I'm responsible for my comfort. When I'm outside of my comfort zone, then the Holy Spirit gets to do His work. Because He is our comforter. He leads us, but He also brings comfort. So when we step out of our comfort zone, Holy Spirit can do His job. Amen. Okay, so our new man is totally based on Jesus Christ. Okay. He is our example. And we spoke this morning earlier, we had a chat, and he's saying that we cannot follow other people. We are supposed to follow Him. Okay. He came to live the life. He came to walk it out. And He came to lay down His life for us. Okay. He showed us what it means to have an unselfish love. Because one thing about the spirit that we got at the full, that tries to look out after me. It puts me above everything else. Okay. And we were never created for that. When Jesus comes, he serves the people. Okay, he comes, he comes as a servant. He washes his disciples' feet. Okay. So Nowadays, we got like tackies and socks and everything on. Those eyes were like pluckies, okay, sandals. Okay, and then for him, washing the feet. Kind of, could have not, it could have not been nice, okay. These things are full of dust and all kinds of things, okay. But he humbled himself. Okay, he laid down himself. He didn't think himself high as other people. Okay. So in his example, we need to do that. We need to look at people around us. And esteem them higher than we are. Amen. Let's go to Acts 17. Acts 17 verse 28. It says, For in Him we live and move, and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also His offspring. So in Him we live. In Him we move. In Him we have our being. So everything is based on Him. Okay. So whatever we do, we live in Him. So go back to Galatians 2.20. Says that the life I now live, I live in Him, through Him, by Him. And it says, and move. So, whatever we do, Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father do. So, He needs to be the thing that moves us. Okay. He needs to be the, the one that leads us. His ways need to move us. His, needs, His ways need to direct us, push our actions. Okay. And says, and have our being. Our being is who we are. Okay. So in Him, we are. He is who we are. Sounds good, eh? Good grammar. <laughs> okay. Whatever He is, that is what, who we are. Okay. So He is our example. So our identity and our sense of purpose 
are intricately linked. Okay, so they are linked. Identity and our purpose are linked. Okay. These two drive our actions. So whatever we find our identity in and our purpose in, that is what will drive our actions. So what we believe about ourselves, so what we believe about ourselves, that is our identity, who we think we are, okay, who we know we are, see, has a huge impact on what we allow ourselves to do. Okay, so whatever we are impacts what we do, our actions. So our identity impacts our actions. And then what we believe ourselves capable of achieving. Okay, and that is your purpose. So through that we find identity. Our identity determines what we're going to do, our actions. And, so, and we can, and what we believe ourselves capable of achieving. Okay. And your purpose is what you think you're capable to achieve. But if you don't know who you are, you're not going to know what you'll be able to achieve. Okay. We had a conversation earlier as well about jumping off stuff and doing things that's high and all kinds of stuff like that. Okay. So myself, I don't like heights. Okay. Yeah. And other people, they don't worry about the heights. They just jump off high things and all kinds of stuff like that. So I'll never jump out of a plane with a parachute, okay? If the plane is still running. It's not necessary for that, okay? Exactly. But other people, they do it for fun, okay? But they believe they are capable of landing safely. That's something they are able to achieve, okay? So other things I, I know I can do, which other people don't think they can do, okay? So our purposes are different. So a lot of times we need to know, so what you think we are able to do, or capable of doing, that's what we'll do. Because you're not going to try something that you don't think you are capable of. I mean, so as we grow in Christ, we know who we are. He says, this is who you are. And this means you are capable of this. But then that has to line up with our actions. Because now we won't be able to step out in faith, because that's what it is. Stepping out in faith doing what God said we can do. Because only when you step out in faith and you do what He's told you to do, then your faith has become an action. Okay. And we, when we're in that action, now we know, okay, I've done this, this is what God said I can do, this is what I said I'm capable of, and guess what? I've done it. And that is part of our building blocks. Amen. So how do we start learning our identity? How do we get a better understanding of our identity? This is our identity. Okay. Everything who we are is in the Word. Amen. Power of God. Yeah, just go to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, verse 1. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. 5, verse 1. So, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. The Amplified says, Therefore be imitators of God. Copy Him and follow His example. As well beloved children, imitate their Father. Okay, so if we want to get to know God, we need to copy Him, look at Him, imitate Him, follow Him. Okay, so a lot of things. So small children, who do they look at? Parents. Their parents. If you see a couple of children playing and you know the, the, all the parents well, and you just spend a few minutes with the children, you can actually know whose kids they are. Because they pick up the mannerisms, they pick up the, the word, the sayings, everything from their parents. Attitudes. Attitudes, everything. Okay. So now you can know, but without, without knowing whose child it is, you can know who's the mother and the father of the child. 
you can link it okay because of their actions so how do they learn it they imitate they study it okay so my mom's got the parrot and so one thing about the parrot is the only way you can teach it not to say something is by not saying it okay if you say something and I pick it up it's stored in the memory okay they imitate people around them they imitate things around them okay so the parrot's got also an awesome way of imitating the microwave or the stove like beep 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 when it's finished okay so you'll be busy putting something in the, in the stove and the next time of the year beep 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 run off to the stove and the stuff is not even half back baked yet okay <laughs> Why is that? Because he's imitating the stove. Okay. He's imitating his environment. Okay. So we need to spend time in the Word of God. So that we can start to imitate him. Okay, so we need to imitate the attributes of God. Okay. But some of the attributes are only for God. We can't imitate it. Okay. Stuff like um, incomprehensible, self-existent, omnipresent. God is everywhere at the same time. And guess what? I can't be everywhere at the same time. So it will be difficult for me to try and do something that only God can be. Okay, so we need to be realistic. Okay, see what God is, what we can do, what He can do, and know that. Since God are uh, omnipresent, so He's also all-knowing. God is all-knowing. He knows all of our hearts. He knows our thoughts right now. Whatever we're thinking now, He knows it. So that's something we can't do. He says, omnipotent. So He is powerful. Okay. He's sovereign. Okay. But there are things that we can learn. That is like to be faithful. To be holy. To be loving. To be merciful. To be truthful. To be gracious, to be good and righteous with His help. Okay. So we can see God reaching out to people, God sitting down talking to people. The lady at the well, He spoke to her and she's like, why would you speak to me? Jews don't speak to Samaritans. And yet, even worse, I'm a, I'm a woman. Okay. But God went and He spent time with her, spoke to her. And as soon as God spoke to her, she came out with the truth. Okay. This, is what, this is my situation. So Jesus could have an impact on her life. Okay. He was merciful. Okay. He spent time with her. So we can learn the attributes of God and we can apply that in our lives. We can imitate that. Amen. To become more and more like Him. So we need to develop our identity based on the Word of God, what God says about us. Okay. So it doesn't help it want to try and build our identity based on things around us. But let's base it on the Word of God. So by using the Scripture. Okay. So the Bible is a very, cool, very practical book. Very practical. Okay. It has answers to the most questions you have. But the Bible, it takes some time. It's not a quick fix. It's not always a quick answer. If you want to read about the subject, you need to go spend some time in the Word of God. You can go and compare scriptures with scriptures. You can get, you get like, it's like puzzle pieces. Okay. It's we get to. So it's not like Google. Okay. Google, you type in, what is the... And it gives you a whole list of things. Okay. But the word of God is practical. God is found, he says, seek the scriptures. So we need to spend time seeking him. Seeking whatever we need from him, from the word of God. Getting our identity out of the Bible. The more time we spend in the word and allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal to us our true identity, the more puzzle pieces we get together to form, the, to see who we really are. Okay. 
So firstly, it's about Him. Get to know God. Get to know His attributes. Get to know what God does, what God doesn't do. What God likes, what God doesn't like. Okay? So all that forms part of our puzzle. To realize who we are. Amen. Okay, so identity is a gift from God. Amen. So a great part of our Christianity is to receive our new identity. Okay. When we come to Christ, we get a new identity. The old man has passed away. We've got a new identity. We've got a new man. Given by Christ. Amen. So through Jesus, we don't lose our true selves. But we become our true selves. Okay. Through Jesus... We don't lose our true selves. We become our true selves. Okay. So, it says we are His masterpiece. Created, that's Ephesians 2.10. We are His masterpiece, His workmanship. Created unto good works, which He has planned for us a long time ago. So, God's got a plan for all of our lives. We're not just here by accident. We're not here just because of something that went wrong or went right or whatever. We're here because He has planned each one of us. And all of us are part of His plan. And God has planned good works for all of us. Okay. He has formed us in our mother's womb. He knows our destiny. Okay. I think it's Ephesians 1, it says that He has predestinated us. Amen. So He wants us to do or to be who He has planned us to be. And the only way to get there is through Him, to find our true selves. Okay, let's go to Colossians. Okay, so here we see Colossians 1.19. It says, For it pleased the Father, sorry, right there, one nineteen. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. In who? In Christ. Okay. So in Christ is what? All fullness of God. Okay. Dwells in Christ. Okay, let's go one chapter further. Uh, verse 2, verse 9. Okay, it says, For in him, let's go back to verse 8. It says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Okay. So there's a warning. Careful. People want to deceive you. People want to rob you of your identity. Yes. People want to remove the Christ identity of you. Okay. They want to see, they want to lead you on wrong ways. It says, For in Him, in Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So in Christ, all fullness of the Godhead bodily lives okay and verse 10 says and you are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power Amen. so if we follow him if we imitate him and he is the fullness of the godhead bodily then we become complete in him i mean not in ourselves in him okay let's go to Ephesians 3. Okay, Ephesians 3 verse 14. Or well, from 14 it says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with the might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with the saints, with all the saints, what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Okay, let's go back. Okay, verse 17 again. So it starts off, it says, I'm praying to God and I'm asking Him uh, of the whole family, heaven and earth, that, he's, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory. So God wants us to be, or He wants to be the riches of His glory. Okay. He says, to be strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man. So His Spirit in us strengthens us. Amen. So in a, in a man, we get strengthened by the might of His Spirit. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. So where is Christ? In our hearts. Amen. So that ye being rooted and grounded in love. We need to be rooted and grounded in His love for us. Okay. Rooted and grounded. If you see a big tree next to the road, that tree is standing there and that tree is rooted and grounded. Okay. It's not going anywhere. I've seen many accidents where small cars, medium cars, big cars crash into a tree next to the road. And that tree is still standing. Because that tree is rooted and grounded. God knew what He did when He made trees to stand. Okay. The whole car, the whole truck, everything will be around the tree. Okay. You'll see maybe some bark or something removed from the tree. But that tree is still standing. Maybe if it's a dry tree or something like that, will that will weaken it, it might get over. But a strong tree, rooted and grounded, does not move. So when we are rooted and grounded in Him, the enemy can come at what speed? Any speed. Any speed. And connect with us. If we are rooted and grounded in Christ, we will stand. Any circumstance can come our way, when we are rooted and grounded in Christ, we are going to stand. Because we are standing in Him. His strength is in us. He is carrying us through. So what a privilege we have, as sons and daughters of God, to be rooted and grounded in Him. Okay, it's rooted and grounded in love. To know, no matter what I go through, He's got me. No matter what I face, He's got me. Okay. Because now we are in Him. So verse 18 says, May you be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, depth, and height. To know the love of Christ. Okay. What I love about this, it gives us four dimensions of love which we really aren't able to understand. Because we can think three-dimensional. But the fourth dimension is a bit so elusive to us. Okay. So here it says, what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and height? So it's got four dimensions of love. Okay. So God's got even more love than we can comprehend for us. His dimensions of love are so big. I mean... And it says, to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. Okay, all knowledge. Pass all the knowledge. It says, that ye might be filled with all fullness of God. Okay, first we see that Christ is the filled with the fullness of God. Now it says that we can be filled with the fullness of God. Through Him who lives in us. 
we become filled. Amen. Okay, let's go to verse, verse 20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly <coughs> abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. How awesome is this? It says, now unto him who is able. So, who is able? Christ. Okay. He's able. It says, to do exceeding. So what does exceeding mean? More than you planned. Okay. Hey? Over and above. Over and above. So that's over above. It's in equity, says abundantly. So what does abundantly mean in over above? Eh? More than. Okay, so now if that's what it says, above all. So what is above all? Like the heaven is above. Like the heaven is above, okay. It says, Above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. So his power is at work in us. So I just want to read from the Amplified as well. It says, Now to him who by the action of his power is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do superabundantly, far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. So we're just talking about the four dimension of God's love. Now we're here in the superabundance of God's provision. So God is able to do far above and it says yeah, what you dare to ask. It says to ask or think. Our God is able to do far more. Okay, let's go back. To do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think. That is what He is capable of. And all that is, it says, for his power to work in us, and to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all ages, a world without end. So all this is for his glory. So God is able to do all this stuff for his glory. What is our part in it? Say again. To abide, yes. To submit, to follow him, to imitate him. When we are there, when we're submitting to Him, He's a provider. And He says, yeah, He can provide much more than we can ask or even think. So, have you ever just thought about what is the biggest thing you can ask God? God says, I can even do more than that. He says, your brain is too small, I can provide more than what you can think of. That's our God. How awesome is that? But we are his sons and daughters. Okay. So Christ is our life. We belong to Jesus. So and it says right now. Not only is he our guarantee of it in heaven, but he, he put Holy Spirit in us. This is a down payment. Okay. Of it by the Spirit now. As he lives in us. He put his spirit inside of us. This is down payment. Okay. So we, yes, we're going to heaven. We're going to, we belong to him. And he says, but wait, you don't have to wait until then. I'm putting my spirit in you right now. Amen. How awesome is that? Okay. So now his joy becomes our joy. Now we share what he's got. Okay. His love becomes our love. Okay. I think it's Romans 5 verse 5. It says that um, Holy Spirit pours out God's love in our hearts. Okay. 
Holy Spirit pours out God's love in our hearts. So His love becomes our love. Come off, just confirm. Okay. So Romans 5 verse 5 says, God, Holy Spirit pours out God's love in our hearts. So we don't have to even love other people with our love. Do you hear that? It takes God's love to love God. So God pours out His love in our hearts. And we return by thanking Him, loving Him back with His love. And His love doesn't change, doesn't go up and down. It's not happy the one day and sad the next day. His love is running 100% all the time. Okay. That four-dimensional love is at work all the time. So He says, now we can love with His love. And that's why when we love other people, we don't need for them to love us back. When we go out on the street or we go minister to people and we love on people, we are not dependent on them loving us back to get a good feeling or to whatever. Okay. Because now we love with His love. And we know that we are loved. And we need to let His love flow through us. Always say we need to be river Christians. As the love comes in, it needs to go out. Okay. We're not supposed to be dam Christians. What do you do with a dam? You stop the water. Okay. In a river, if you stop the water somewhere, you're building a dam. Okay. And when a dam happens, the water can become stagnant, becomes old, okay. it becomes not nice. So we need to let the love of God flow through us. Okay. And all the water has been standing for a while, it starts stinking. Okay. And you see like uh, mosquitoes and stuff living in there that's not supposed to be there. Okay. But as long as the water is flowing, it gets renewed. Okay. It's life-giving. Yes, it's life-giving. So the life, that love brings life. So we get out and we just love on people. We love on people. And we're not, we don't expect them to love us back. But we give the love. Okay? Because we get filled of His love. So His peace become our peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. And we read from verse 17, if you can see, we see it in um, Ephesians 3, it says, well, he's putting strength inside of us. So his strength becomes our strength. Even when the guys were walking yesterday, as Jonathan said it, so they felt their own strength was going. They started praising, and next moment they would get they just got up this hill. Okay. Whose strength was it? Strength of Christ in the inner man. So God's, God's strength in us, in the inner man, is able to flow into our bodies. It's able to manifest in our bodies. Whatever we need can manifest in our bodies. I mean, so his strength then becomes our strength. Okay, and I think the verse we started off, uh, was Acts 17, 28 says, And in him we live and move and have our being. So in him, everything that's in him can flow through us. Becomes ours. I mean, Let's go to Ephesians 2.14. Ephesians 2.14 says, For He is our peace, who have made both, for He, sorry, who have made both one. He have broken down in the middle wall partition between us. Okay. So Jesus is our peace. Okay. He's become our peace. Let's go to John 17. John 17 verse 20. Okay. I think I've jumped a bit here. Okay, before we read there. So, we become united with Jesus. It means we can become joined. Amen. 
So there cannot be any greater experience than being joined with Christ. Okay? Colossians 1 27 says, Christ in us, the hope of glory. So God has put Christ in us. And we just read about Christ is the fullness. So the fullness of God comes living in us. Okay, let's go to okay, John 17, verse 20. It says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they may all be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory, of, the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved me as thou hast loved me. Sorry. Has loved them, sorry. And thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Okay. So here Jesus is saying that, he's talking, he's praying for disciples, and he's saying that um, not only these of me, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So everybody that's going to come to Jesus after the disciples is included here. Okay. Amen. So now he says that they can be one in us. Just as the Father and Jesus are one, we become one with Him. Amen. So it's not just disciples, it's everybody following it. Okay. So we can be, become one with Him, joined back to Him. Because that's what it's all about. Jesus came to reconcile us back to the Father. Jesus came to bring us back to His family. He says we are one with Him. So how awesome is that? that we get to be one with Christ. We are in union with Him. So He says we are heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. And that enables us to be co-laborers with Him. We get to do the works that God has called us to do. What a privilege it is to be a son and daughter of God, getting to do the works, getting to see lives being changed, getting to see His miracles happening. And that's what we are, God has placed inside of us. That's His plan for us. Amen. Let's go to John fourteen twenty. Okay, this is the verse before it says, At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Okay, so God is saying that He's becoming, He's coming to live in us, and we in Him. Amen. Amen. And that's why I said, God put Christ in us. The hope of glory is in us. Amen. And part of this, our new identity. Our citizenship changes. Our citizenship changes. Because now we no longer citizens of this world. We become citizens of heaven. Okay. And it says that it, so now we are in Christ. So we are built on His foundation. And we belong to the people of heaven. Then the language, the values, the customs, expectations of this world starts feeling more and more foreign to us. You start feeling more and more uncomfortable while living here. Yeah. Have you experienced that? Yes. Okay. Out of place. Out of place. So even yesterday we went to a family gathering and I really felt out of place there. Okay, there's nothing I could really speak to people about that connected or something like that. Okay. So the more and more we get to know Him, the more He reveals to us who He is and who we are in Him. 
the more foreign this world becomes. Okay. Their ways of doing things, so their jokes and all kinds of stuff. Okay. Their values, and what they drive, where they stay, all kinds of stuff like that. It's irrelevant, okay. Because now our, well, our minds need to change according to his will. Okay. Now we see looking up to heavenly places. Okay. And we look up to him to see what he does in our lives. So when we are born again, we become born again for another world, which is heaven. Okay. So... And that is a greater kind of existence, heaven. Okay. So now he's put heaven inside of us. Okay. And we show heaven around us. Okay. And that's why our lives change, the way we do things change. And like I say, we feel a bit uncomfortable here. Because a lot of things we like, it doesn't gel anymore of us. Things you used to do, now it's not so nice anymore. Okay. As we grow in him, we become more like him. I mean, let's go Philippians 3. Philippians 3. Okay, verse 20 says, 320 says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also look for our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Amplified says, But we are citizens of the state, the commonwealth, the homeland, which is in heaven. That's who we are. That's our citizenship. Now we belong to heaven. Okay. So now we get a new ID. doesn't say Republic of South Africa. Okay. It says the commonwealth, the homeland of heaven. Amen. That's who we are. Okay. We are now citizens of heaven. Let's go to Ephesians 2.19. Okay, 2.19 says, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, of the household of God. Thank you. So we become fellow citizens of the household of God. Amen. Let's go to John 17 again. John 17, verse 14. Okay, it says, I have given them my word, or sorry, given them thy word, and the world have hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray that thou should take them, so I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from evil. For they are not of of the world, even as I am not of the world. Okay. So Jesus says, you will be hated because you don't fit in. Okay. Yeah. Everyone loved them. Jesus didn't say, oh Lord, please take them out. So they feel unwelcome, just rapture them. <laughs> no, he says, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from evil. So we need to stand here, we need to represent Him, and God will keep us from evil. Okay. So don't think you'll get raptured when you hit some problems, okay, when they don't like you. Let's go to um, John 15, verse 19. It says, if you, if you were of the world, the world would love His own. But because you are not of this world, 
But I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore the world hateth you. Okay, it says, if you were the world, the world would love you. It says, but you are not of the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. So God has chosen us to be part of Him. His love for us has made us part of His family. Okay, let's go to Ephesians 4, 23. Twenty-three and twenty-four. It says, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put off, sorry, that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Okay, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So up here in the spirit of mind. Okay, we need to be renewed. Renewed to what? Renewed to what God says about us. Renewed to what the Word of God says. He says, and that you put on the new man. Okay, we have to put it on. We have to walk it out. It says, which after God is created in righteousness. So our new man is created in righteousness. And it says, and true holiness. That's God's plan for us. Okay, the Amplified on these, uh, verse 23 and 24 says, And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude, and put on the new nature, the regenerate self, created in God's image, God-like, in true righteousness and holiness. Okay. So living out our new identity in Christ as it take root where? In our minds. We need to constantly renew our minds who we are. Because our identity brings purpose, which brings action. Then it says, and it must be based on who God is. Our identity has to be based on who God is. It says here, after, uh, it says, after God. So, like God, Amplified says, um, created in the God's image, God-like. So, it has to be in His image, His likeness, and not on ourselves. Yeah. So, if we want to walk out who we are in Christ, we need to build it on who He is. We need to spend time in the Word of God. We need to renew our minds to what He says about us. We need to stand, get rooted and grounded in His love. To know what He wants, what He doesn't want from us. It all starts in the Word of God. It needs to be based on the Word of God. It doesn't need to be, does not need to be based or we need not base it on what people say. Okay, it must be on the Word of God. Because people can say all kinds of things. Always say, if the devil can't kick you under, they will try to push you over. Okay. It's either bring you very low or it's trying to buff you up. Okay. Yeah. If you're puffed up, and he says, knowledge puffs up. If we just spend time in the Word of God getting knowledge, we get puffed up. Mm-hmm. And this puffed upness can then kick us over. Then we become so puffed up. I know the Word of God. You can't tell me anything. I've heard it so many times. But if the Word of God doesn't become practical, if you don't start putting this into exercise, if you're not living out what this says to you, who you are, if you're not putting it into practice, it's going to puff you up. Okay. Because the enemy wants you either down, where you think you're nothing, or if that doesn't work, you try and push you over, where you think you are everything. You're like, you think you are like God. Now you're putting yourself on God's standard. But we need to submit. We need to put this into truth. When we read something in the Word of God, it says, faith without works is dead. 
You can read the Bible so many times. You can know the Bible from beginning to start. If you're not living it out, if you're not putting it into practice, it's puffing you up. You get so many people, you can't tell them anything. You tell them something and say, oh, what about this, this, and this, and this scripture? Because it's all about head knowledge. It's about them being puffed up. And then they're going to miss out. Because then they go and say, what do you do with my word? What do you do with my word? Do you use it just to defend yourself? Or do you use it to become a servant? Do you use it to become a son of God? To walk it out? Do you use it to become one with me? It's allowing you to become one with me. I'm allowing you to share my glory. I'm allowing you to become a co-laborer with me. What are you doing in the Word of God? Amen. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you this morning for your Word. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, we heard this morning, Lord, that you are omnipresent, omnipotent. Lord, you are above everything, Father. Lord, there's no way that we can compare with your goodness, your greatness. And Lord, this morning, I pray, Lord, that we'll come to you humble like children, Father. And Lord, that we will humble ourselves before you, Lord. Help us today, Lord, to look at you, Lord. To look at Jesus and let's start imitating your good attributes in our lives, Father. Help us to grow in love, Father. Your unselfish love. You have set so many examples in your word, Lord, of just unselfish love, Father. Laying down your life for us, Father. Lord, serving the people, Father. Just doing everything. Help us, Lord, to never esteem ourselves higher than people around us, Father. Help us to look at each other, Lord. Let us put each other above ourselves. Let us put other people's needs above our own needs, Lord. Help us, Lord, that we can show your love to people, Father. Because, Lord, it says the love of God compels us, Father. The love of God draws people near to Him. Lord, let your love flow through us. Help us to exercise your love, Father. Help us to put into practice, Father, what we see in your word, Father. And when you speak to us, Father, help us not to consider, is this going to be for my good or not? Or what's the, the best or the bad options coming out of this? But we will just trust your word, Father. Restore unto us, Father, the way that Adam was before the fall, Father. Because, Lord, you said you have put the completeness of Christ in us, Father. Also, you can restore us, Lord, to be back before sin, Father. Lord, help us have the same mentality that was in Adam before sin, Father, to place that will be in us, Father. When you speak to us, we'll just do without thinking, knowing that whatever God says is for our benefits, Lord. We thank you for your word this morning, Father. Help us to stay in your word this morning, Father. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will open up the word of God to us, Father. Lord, let not just be puffing us up in knowledge, Father, but it will be practical, Father. Your word is practical, Father. You want us to use your word, Lord, to do exploits, Father, because you say they that know their God will do exploits, Father. You want us, Lord, to move and to show your strength, Father, so that you can get the glory, Father. This is not for our our glory father this is for your glory father but let us be glory unto you father for just reaching out father for stepping out when you say step out father help us to be obedient father lord because your word says lord obedience is better than sacrifice father let us not try and sacrifice and try and, and miss miss be, be disobedient to you lord and miss what you tell us father but let us be honest lord let us be true to you father and let us start doing what you tell us to do father we thank you lord for your word word today and I pray Lord that your word will lift us up. Holy Spirit be help us Lord to meditate on, upon the word Father. Lord that this word will become alive inside of us Father so that we can be and walk like, Chris, like Christ Father. Lord that we can work, walk out Lord what you have destined us to be. We say thank you for that Father. We honor you today in your precious name. Amen. Thank you guys. Be blessed.